welcome dear viewers to the video on nitrosamine impurities top points for the interview nitrosamine impurities are always discussed and the questions regarding nitrosamine impurities are always being asked in the technical interviews so the professionals uh, which are involved and working in the pharmaceutical field they may come to the questions or come across the questions or uh, uh, problems regarding the nitrosamine impurities this video is for those professionals which want to learn and who, who want to have understanding about the top points for the nitrosamine interviews related questions also the professionals who want to improve their knowledge regarding nitrosamine impurities for those this video will be very helpful more than 50 points will be covered in the video and i request you to be with this video till last so that you will have good idea and good answers to the commonly asked questions See, nitrosamines are the chemical compounds with nitrogen nitrogen bonds classified as probable carcinogens. These can form during drug manufacturing, drug product manufacturing, and during shelf life and specific storage conditions. So, the question may be like what are nitrosamines, how these are formed? What are the health risks? So these have carcinogenic potential even at very low levels. So the nitrosamine impurities uh, are considered as cohort of concern. Regulatory requirements for nitrosamines uh, are there and agencies mandate identification, control and minimization of nitrosamines in the drug product. Increase the scrutiny of nitrosamine. So in 2008, uh, there was a nitrosamine detected in a certain type of compounds which are used to lower the blood pressure, like valsartan uh, type of compounds. The response was like global recalls were there and strict regulatory guidelines came into the picture. Sources of nitrosamine formation. So contaminated raw materials, manufacturing process, uh, which involves certain solvents and catalysts, chemical instability, drug degradation under certain storage conditions and shelf life lead to the nitrosamine formation. Regulatory guidelines are there for nitrosamines like uh, ICHM7 guideline is there, FDA has published many guidelines, EMA has published many guidelines and also there are some guidelines from WHO and VISA for the recommendations for assessment and control of nitrosamine impurities. ICHM7 R2 overview focus is uh, assessment and control of mutagenic impurities including nitrosamines. So if someone asks you about the guideline from ICH for nitrosamines, so you should tell them that ICH M7 is the guideline. What is the acceptable intake for nitrosamines? So you can give examples like NDMA is having 96 ng per day, nanogram per day and NDEA with 26.5 uh, nanogram per day as acceptable intake limit. And these intake limits are based on cancer risk thresholds. Nitrosamine classification by potency. So high potency carcinogens are there like NDMA and DEA. And lower potency are also there which require specific threshold, threshold for the toxicity. What is cohort of, uh, cohort of concern concept? So uh, the definition is compounds with a high risk potential. These are called as cohort of concern and implications are regulatory agencies set stringent limit for these compounds. Methods for detecting nitrosamines. So methods are like HPLC, GCMS, high sensitivity and high specificity methods are there. Then LC, MS or MS are the methods for detection of the nitrosamines. What are the key steps in nitrosamine risk assessment? So first is identify the sources formation pathway analysis, analytical testing, control and mitigation strategies for nitrosamines, API selection and nitrosamine formation. So in fact, API with secondary or tertiary amine group are prone to the nitrosamine formation. So 
interviewer may ask you the question like uh, which type of APIs are prone for the nitrous amine formation. So you should tell them that the APIs with secondary and tertiary amine groups. How is the control? So careful raw material selection is essential for the control. Mitigation strategies for, for nitrous amine in manufacturing. So removing nitro, nitro setting agents, alternative synthetic pathways, stringent raw material controls are the pathways. What is the effect of pH on nitrous amine formation? So high pH increases formation likelihood and control is formulation pH adjustment. Generally acidic pH is favorable for the nitrous amine formation and basic or uh, basic or neutral pH uh, doesn't help or can reduce the nitrous amine formation. Impact of recycled solvents. So risk is uh, these can introduce nitro setting agents and solution is to monitor and test solvent quality. Then also do not use the recycled solvents. Nitro setting agents. So what are nitro setting agents? Definition is chemicals that react with amines to form the nitrous amines and example in nitrite and nitrates. Toxicological evaluation in nitrous amine control. Purpose is to determine safety levels and assess the health risk for the nitrous amine impurities. Nitrous amine control strategy involves risk assessment, analytical test testing, process optimization and regulatory documentation. Water quality and nitrous amine risk. Contamination can be there from water and this can introduce nitrates and solution is to use pharmaceutical grade uh, of water. Primary versus secondary amines in nitrous amine formation. So primary amines are less reactive while the secondary amines are uh, having higher potential for the nitrous amine formation with a nitro setting agents. What is the LOD in testing for nitrous amines? So limit of detection that is LOD. Definition lowest concentration detected but not quantified. FDA and EMA guidelines for nitrous amines. So in overview generally similar guidelines are there but may vary in the methods or acceptable limits. So sometimes some guidelines have stringent limit while the other guideline may have different limit. A risk based approach to nitrous amine control. So assessment each component and process step evaluated for the nitrous amine risk and thereby you can use the risk based approach to nitrous amine control. Non-compliance impact. What is the impact of non-compliance? Consequence will be recalls, warning letters, approval delays for the formulations and APIs. Frequency of nitrosamine risk assessment. When and how frequent it should be done. Recommendation is when there are changes in the process or supplies, that time you should perform the risk assessment. What are the matrix effect in nitrosamine analysis? So definition is interference from the sample substances affect the detection. These are the matrix effects you can answer. Threshold of toxicological concern. What is TTC? TTC is typically a 1.5 microgram per day for nitrosamines and it guides impurity assessment. It is as per ICH M7 guideline. Packaging material and nitrosamine risk. Issue is that packaging materials may uh, release uh, amines and solution is to evaluate and select uh, suitable materials. Importance of control strategies. Purpose is to prevent unintended nitrosamine formation during manufacturing and storage or in process storage also, whole time storage also. So this is the control strategy. Control in continuous manufacturing. Continuous manu monitoring, inline sensors and frequent testing for the nitrosamine impurities is the answer. Storage conditions and nitrosamine formation. So impact of heat, light and humidity might be there which can catalyze the nitrosamine formation. Force degradation studies. Purpose. Simulate potential nitrosamine formation over shelf life. So force degradation studies are there which can simulate nitrosamine formation potential over the shelf life. Storage temperature and stability. So effect of higher temperature can increase formation rates. Acceptance criteria for nitrosamines. So these uh, are based on to the levels, based on safety data and regulatory limits. Specificity of nitrosamine impurities. Example, NDM is having high uh, carcinogenic potential and how, how it should be controlled. That a specific test and mitigation strategy should be there to control the NDM. Regulatory filings and nitrosamines. So documentation is required for drug master files, 
risk assessment and test data to be submitted then coming to the case study for challenging nitrosamine mitigation so challenge was like nitrosamine formation from residual solvents and secondary amines and then how you have mitigated that risk so you can answer that revise synthesis route to avoid nitrosetting agents switch to purer starting materials uh, adjusted ps to reduce formation of nitrosamines and outcome was successful mitigation and that's why compliance was achieved so if case study is asked then you can give the case studies like this role of impurity in profiling nitrosamine control purpose of profiling identify and quantify potential nitrosamine impurities including uh, the mutagenic and other nitrosamines ndsris uh, impurities detect sources like excipients interactions and degradation and what is the benefit so it enables targeted strategies to keep nitrosamine below acceptable limits emerging analytical techniques for nitrosamine testing advanced techniques are there for analytical techniques for nitrosamine testing and these are very advanced lcms ms gcms and ms these have high sensitivity and specificity UHPLC with high resolution MS. These analytical techniques have improved quantification, real time monitoring, chemometric methods, and inline sensors. Trained, increasing accuracy, especially in continuous manufacturing. These are the analytical techniques. Addressing unexpected nitrosamine formation during scale up. Approach. Conduct root cause analysis for parameter changes like temperature, pressure. Review raw materials and intermediates for contamination. And mitigation is modify the process and parameters or materials and check the test results for compliance. Evaluating nitrosamine risk in new APIs. So if you have new APIs and you are working on the new type of uh, drug substances, then what is the process for nitrosamine risk assessment? So, uh, start with the uh, analyzing API structure for nitrosamine prone groups like amine groups. Conduct risk assessment across manufacturing process. Monitor steps involved or steps involving secondary tertiary amines. And goal is to have early risk identification and prevention so that the new APIs will not have risk of nitrosamine impurities or may have very less risk. Validating new analytical methods for nitrosamine detection. So if question is asked like how uh, is the validation requirement or what is the validation requirement for analytical methods. So as per ICHQ2 parameters are assessed. Specificity, sensitivity, accuracy and precision is tested. Linearity, detection, quantification limits are to be performed. Robustness testing should be there to ensure consistency in the routine use. Designing stability studies for nitrosamine sensitive drugs. This is very important that how you will study the stability for nitrosamine sensitive drugs considerations are storage conditions will be there for evaluation like temperature humidity light packaging materials that avoid uh, that avoid nit amine release generally nitrocellulose uh, is considered as a, a risk factor in packaging post degradation studies for worst case predictions objective accurate nitrosamine monitoring through shelf life then coming to the documentation, nitrosamine risk assessment findings. How documentation will be done? So documentation will include methodology and analytical data, control strategy rational, regulatory submission details, and you will prepare SOP for the alignment. And purpose is to ensure comprehensive risk documentation. Now coming to ensuring compliance with ICHM7 guidelines. So what are the steps to be taken? Conduct risk-based assessment for mutagenic impurities. Document limits based on compound-specific data. Update risk assessment and procedures regularly. And outcome will be you will maintain the ICH compliance. Cross-department collaboration in nitrosamine risk assessment. What are the key contributors? What are the cross-functional teams, stakeholders for nitrosamine risk assessment? Starting with the R&D. So synthetic root insights will be there from R&D, then QC will be there for analytical method precision, toxicology department for acceptable intake levels, regulatory affairs for compliance guidance, 
and what benefit you will have that you will have comprehensive nitrosamine risk assessment and management across the product life cycle so these are the important points which are required to be understood for nitrosamine impurities and these are the top points for interview questions thank you for watching the video and i request you to go through the other nitrosamine related videos onto this channel please do comment if you have any questions doubts or suggestions for me thank you